Hi class! Today we will begin learning about gene regulation in eukaryotes. So why is gene regulation important? In a previous lesson, I told you that in prokaryotes, gene transcription needs to be regulated to be, for the cells to be able to respond to changes in their environment. Well, that still applies to eukaryotes as well. But eukaryotes have an additional need for gene regulation. Many eukaryotes are multicellular, so the incredible variety of cells in a multicellular organism, such as this cute baby, arose out of a single fertilized egg. The single fertilized egg went through many, many rounds of mitosis, which replicates cells exactly. So all of the cells in the multicellular organism have identical DNA sequences. And so how is it that they become this incredible variety of cells? I find this area of biology the most fascinating. So it, a lot of it has to do with gene regulation. Specific genes have to get turned on or turned off to instruct the cell, hey you, you're supposed to be a muscle cell you need to become a fat cell versus a bone cell or a blood cell and so on. Now gene regulation is so important that eukaryotes have multiple ways of doing it. So eukaryotes can control chromatin modification, there's control over transcription, controls over RNA processing, RNA transport, regulation of translation, and other ways that are not even pictured in this diagram. But in this lesson, we will focus on this first level, control over chromatin modification and chromatin packaging. So first, a quick review of what is chromatin. So you have a lot of DNA in every cell. It's so much that it needs to be packaged very tightly to fit into the nucleus. And the DNA gets packaged around proteins. That complex of DNA and proteins in a single nucleus is referred to as chromatin. So this black line here represents the DNA double helix and it gets wrapped around a complex of proteins referred to as histones. A single unit of DNA wrapped around one histone complex is a nucleosome. And so you can see here that there's multiple nucleosomes linked together like beads on a string. So chromatin can be divided into two subdivisions. Some of your chromatin is referred to as euchromatin, and euchromatin is more loosely packaged, whereas other chromatin is heterochromatin, which is much more tightly packaged DNA. Euchromatin is active in terms of that transcription can happen in the euchromatin regions. But heterochromatin is silent. It is not accessible to RNA polymerase for transcription. Now, when I said that eukaryotes can control chromatin modifications, what I meant by that is that our cells can regulate the addition of chemical modifications of DNA or histones that change chromatin structure. These chemical modifications affect the non-covalent interactions between nucleosomes and within nucleosomes. Now, scientists know of at least 16 different modifications to histones and at least four different modifications of DNA. So it's an incredible variety. This packaging of chromatin impacts the ability of various cellular machinery to access the DNA. So all those chromatin modifications, they can control transcription, DNA repair, and the cell cycle. Now in this lesson, we'll just focus on the control over transcription. So while our cells have an incredible variety of chromatin modifications, we will focus on two of them. The first is DNA methylation. DNA methylation is the addition of methyl groups, which consists of carbon surrounded by hydrogen, to the actual DNA molecule. DNA methylation, in general, 
there are some exceptions, but in general, DNA methylation causes um, tighter packaging of chromatin, so it reduces transcription. This gene that's pictured here in red is no longer accessible to RNA polymerase when the chromatin is more tightly packaged. So usually, DNA methylation leads to a decrease in transcription. The other example is histone acetylation. Histone acetylation leads to an increase in transcription. It is the addition of something called acetyl groups to the histone proteins. When the acetyl groups are added, it changes the charges and it causes the chromatin to become more loosely packaged. So if the gene is now located here in between the nucleosomes, it is now accessible to RNA polymerase and therefore can be transcribed. Now I'll throw out a little extra detail just because it's interesting, but you won't be tested on it. What if the gene that needs to be transcribed is located right here? So it, the chromatin is no longer tightly packaged, but the gene is still in this nucleosome complex. Will it be accessible to, trans, to RNA polymerase for transcription? It will not. There's actually a whole interesting group of proteins called chromatin remodelers that use energy in ATP to shift where the gene is located, and they'll shift it around so that it now is located right there, and now it will be accessible to RNA polymerase. So that was a little extra fact. The main thing I want you to remember is that certain modifications lead to tighter packaging, which reduces transcription. Other modifications lead to more looser packaging, which increases transcription. Now, these chromatin modifications are often referred to as epigenetic tags. So this picture shows one example, the addition of methyl groups to the DNA molecule. This methylation can be referred to as an epigenetic tag, and it can be passed down during cell division. In some cases, the epigenetic tags can even be passed down from parents to children. Now, the study of the inheritance of these chromatin modifications is often referred to as the field of epigenetics. There has been some debate in the scientific community about exactly how to define epigenetics, but here's one definition. So an epigenetic trait is a stably heritable phenotype resulting from changes in a chromosome without alterations in the DNA sequence. Now, when they talk about a stably heritable phenotype, they don't always mean just from parents to children. It can also be um, inheritance through mitosis. So for example, um, in cancer biology, so epigenetics has been a big part of cancer biology in recent years. So while um, many of the changes that lead to cancer are changes in DNA sequence, so mutations in the actual uh, letters of DNA, we also now know that um, part of cancer development is epigenetics. So for example, an early cancer cell could gain um, an epigenetic tag, some kind of chromatin modification that results in a phenotype that allows it to behave like a successful cancer cell. And this chromatin modification can be passed down as that cancer cell divides and forms a tumor. So this would be a stably heritable phenotype, the phenotype being the cancer phenotype. In other cases, the heritability is from parents to children. And this shows two mice that have identical DNA sequences, and yet their phenotype is not the same. In one of them, there is methylation. That methylation 
can then be passed down from the parent to its children. Various factors affect the deposition of these epigenetic tags on chromatin. These chromatin modifications, or the epigenetic tags, allow cells to respond to both internal and external environmental cues and helps the cells remember what they should be doing. And by remember, I mean which genes should be on or off for longer periods of time. So in embryo development, when all of the cells in the embryo need to differentiate into the wide variety of tissue types and cell types in the multicellular organism. There are various signaling molecules that will lead to the activation of enzymes that modify chromatin, that will modify either the DNA or the histones, and therefore affect uh, gene transcription. So, um, for example, certain genes can be even permanently turned off through chromatin modification so that a particular cell type can develop into a certain tissue. So that would be um, these signaling molecules in the embryo would be an example of an internal cue. But there are also external environmental cues. So scientists have shown that various factors such as your stress level or how much you exercise or your nutrition can actually impact chromatin modeling. One interesting study showed the effect on children born during a period of famine. So if the mom is not getting enough nutrition during pregnancy, that leads to chromatin modification in the baby's DNA. And these chromatin modifications will affect the expression of genes involved in metabolism. So I'd like to ask you this question and write down the answer so we can discuss it in class. Why would it be important for a baby born during a period of famine to have changes in gene expression that affect metabolism? So studies such as this one led to uh, one scientist to say, we are what we eat, but also what our parents ate. So this is the conclusion of this lesson of part one of gene regulation in eukaryotes. In part one, we focused on control over chromatin modification. So how do chemical tags being added to either the DNA molecule or to the histones affect the transcription of genes? And then in future lessons, we will talk about these other levels of gene regulation. So that's it for today.